This is part 3 of our Alan Wake 2 guide, where we're now going to cover all 4 boss fights Saga Anderson will be facing. Most of the essential information about her character build are already covered in part 2. If you haven't seen it yet, I suggest watching that first. I'll leave a link to it down in the description and on the screen. Okay, let's begin. For this fight against Nightingale, we're going to need the service pistol with another headshot upgrade and the sawed off shotgun. If for whatever reason we are low on supplies after entering the threshold, there should be several of them near the mini waterfall just before the showdown begins. As we enter the arena, Nightingale will immediately blink towards Saga. When he does that, activate flashlight boost to stagger him. Once the darkness has been stripped away, execute our pistol and shotgun combo. He will disappear and teleport underneath the giant tree. This is our cue to turn around and gather supplies scattered around the arena, heading towards our right where a container is found. As we follow this narrow path, there will be two spots where Nightingale will appear. The first of which is right here. Same as before, the strategy is to stun him with two headshots and follow it up with shotgun rounds. The next spot is behind this tree, surrounded by a puddle. Turn the camera towards the left and prepare to dodge as we pass by, then follow it up with our combo. Once we spot this container and pick up its contents, we make a right which will take us back to the center of the arena. Nightingale will be underneath the tree again and will most likely teleport right in front of Saga. In the event that he does any of his attacks or she gets grabbed like in this example, that's okay. It means he'll momentarily pause afterwards and we'll have an easier time to land our combo. Before we fight Mulligan and Thornton, let's take a quick look at the arena. The key landmarks here are the well and this giant boulder, which will be used as cover. Thornton will be shooting at Saga from any of these four high ground locations, and that will determine which spot around the rock will be safe. In this fight, all three weapons we have access to up until this point are required, including the crossbow, which we will use for our initial attack. As Thornton climbs up from the well, shoot him with the crossbow and quickly switch over to the shotgun and land both rounds. That should be enough to stop him, but just in case he manages to survive and teleports to an elevated firing position, as mentioned before, just use the rock for cover and shoot back. Once he is gone, we can begin destroying the pieces of darkness, starting with this one above the well. After that, proceed to remove those around the perimeter, starting with this one behind the boulder. We should be able to remove four of them before Mulligan shows up, and when he does, just do the attack combo.
Once he's down, we can reload our weapons and get rid of this piece across the well. We'll also have a few seconds to pick up some supplies on the ground, and it's okay if the last piece is destroyed after Thornton responds, because doing so will make him disappear. We're now in phase 2 of the fight. Position Saga right next to the boulder and prepare the crossbow. As both enemies climb up from the well, shoot Mulligan and stun him with headshots from the pistol. From here, our next move depends on which platform Thornton teleports to. If he chooses any of the two in front of us, same as before, we take cover behind the boulder and wait for Mulligan to get up close before doing the combo. However, if he teleports behind our position, we run towards the other side of the rock right in front of Mulligan and do the same combo, finishing him off with pistol rounds. As for dealing with Thornton, it's just a matter of basic coverage shooting. We'll know if he's about to fire because his weapon can be heard being armed. For this fight against Cynthia, we're going to replace the crossbow with the rifle. In this first phase, the objective is to turn the lights back on. Go to the center platform and press the button. Where are you? Can you hear me? It's so dark. Oh, I'm sorry, kiddo. The hag tricked me. We'll then need to make our way towards this opening, and that means using elevated spots along the way to avoid Cynthia. It's quite easy as you'll see here. To take him back. I need to get the lights on to reach him. Saga! So dark down here. I'm underwater! She's trapped me at the bottom. I don't think I'm gonna make it. She's coming. We'll now follow this path to the left towards the generator. I can't stay in the water. After it has been activated, we climb here and go back to the center platform. I'm not leaving you here, Tor. Hold on! Now that the power's back on, we now head towards the lower level, equipping the rifle along the way. Tell Odin. I'm sorry I f***ed everything up. You can apologize to him yourself! Once we get there, stop right in front of this valve and wait for the scenery to change. We then look towards our immediate right and aim down with the weapon. When Cynthia reveals herself, Start shooting until she drops back to the ground. It takes around 4-5 to five shots before that happens, 
and continuously firing will prevent her from doing anything. But just in case she manages to release exploding clouds, there's an easy way to avoid them. As the particles get close, start walking backwards, and when you see a bright flash, dodge backwards and continue walking in that direction until all of them explode. Once Cynthia drops back to the ground, she'll start running towards Saga, and this is where a melee attack comes in handy. Equip the shotgun, and when she's about two paces away, hit the attack button and Saga will automatically move in for a strike. Now here's the important bit. Before we aim down, it's important that we wait for the animation to finish. Otherwise, you'll see the camera fly all over the place, which can be disorienting. Unleash both rounds and immediately create some distance while reloading. The trick here is to run while doing that, because our movement speed matches closely to hers. Once ready to go, we repeat the melee attack and shotgun combination. With regards to Mr. Scratch, we'll be facing him twice, and the goal is to temporarily immobilize him so we can do our objective. His movements are the same in both scenarios, and surprisingly not that difficult. The key strategy is to maintain a short distance away from him, just out of reach to his melee attacks, which will prevent him from doing anything. Even if we get too close, his swings are heavily telegraphed, as you can see here. The real danger is if we're too far away, where he will do one of two things. First is a darkness wave that has a very wide range. The only way to avoid it is to create some distance while running towards one side. The other is a blink strike, where he'll start brandishing his weapon from afar and follow it through after teleporting in front of Saga. The right time to evade this is immediately after the blink. Once we've avoided those, get back into a close range position and land our attacks. One burst from the sawed off shotgun is enough to stop him. Using the pistol alone, it takes about 6 hits before that happens. As for the rifle, two headshots will do the trick. With those in mind, we don't have to wait for the verbal confirmation before running towards the objective. That's all there is to it. So there we have it, our strategy guide for all the boss fights. If you have any questions or would like some clarifications, the comment section is always open. Good luck.